In this video, we're gonna go over a complete breakdown on how to become a real estate agent in Colorado. So working as a real estate agent comes with many different advantages. And if you're looking into this career, you might want a more flexible schedule, or maybe you just don't want to deal with your boss anymore and you want to become your own boss. Another benefit to becoming an agent is you can basically take the glass ceiling that you have put on your income right now and take it completely off. So that's why I decided to become an agent about six years ago. I was in a really good corporate job, but I had a glass ceiling placed on my income. And no matter how hard I worked, sure, there were certain incentives and bonuses, but there was a cap on how much money I could make. So I decided I wanted to become my own boss, become an entrepreneur, and basically start my own real estate business. And that's what I did. But before you can do that, you have to spend the time, put the work in and get licensed. So in this video, I'm going to go over a step by step guide, how to get through your real estate classes, apply for your license, and then continue on to find a sponsoring broker and start your real estate career. So let's dive right into it. So how do you actually become a real estate agent in the state of Colorado? Well, I'm gonna give you a quick checklist on the complete breakdown, and then we're gonna dive deeper into each thing. First, you should be at least 18 years old. You should have a high school degree or a GED. You need to complete 168 hours of pre-licensed courses. Then you need to pass the course exam, complete your background check and fingerprinting, apply for the PSI uh, real estate exam, pass the Colorado real estate exam with a 75% score or higher, provide proof of ENO insurance, pick your sponsoring broker, and then apply for your real estate license. So before you can start selling million dollar homes in the mountains, you're going to have to get through your pre-licensed classes and go to a state approved real estate school. In Colorado, it's one of the highest education requirements in the entire country. Here's what you need to keep in mind. It's 168 hours of classroom time. Now, if you want to do these classes online, there is a state approved school called Real Estate Express. So check that out. There's an affiliate link down below. They usually have some really good sales and prices going and they do a really good job with real estate pre-licensed education classes. Now, the best part is, is you can do this at your own pace. You can take your time and go online and you can put the work in every single night because you can do it from the comfort of your own home. So it is a lot of hours, but keep in mind, there's some flexibility and once you sign up for classes, you can go online and start taking those classes and really start learning about the things you're going to have to learn to pass the real estate test. So I remember like yesterday sitting for my pre-licensed classes and a lot of the things that I learned was like a completely new language. So if you're new to real estate, you're probably going to learn a lot of new things. Here are some things that you're going to learn in your real estate classroom. Time. Real estate math, land use laws and regulations, fair housing laws, real estate financing, contracts, transfer of title, disclosures, property analysis. So basically how to do like CMA reports for clients and help them with their home's value, uh, license law, ethics, agency law, and the rules of the Colorado Real Estate Commission. So that might seem like a lot and might be overwhelming to you if you're brand new to real estate. So a lot of people do fail the real estate exam the first time around. Now, the best way to study for the exam is basically just to put the work in and time block one or two hours every single night to practice the content and really learn the material. Now, when I did my real estate exam, I got really tired of just looking through textbook after textbook after textbook, and it was kind of burning me out. So I looked into more resources and I was able to find a tool called Prep Agent, and I used that tool to basically pass my exam. So there is an affiliate link down below. We have partner with them as an affiliate because we believe that their product is really good and it did help me pass my exam. So I highly suggest you check them out. And basically what they do is it's like a test like simulation. So they take that information that's out of your textbook. They put it into a test like simulation, kind of like what you're going to see at your real real estate exam. And you can basically practice the test when you answer a question wrong. It will tell you why you answered it wrong. It will tell you the right answer. And it's a really good way to retain real estate knowledge really quickly and give you a much higher chance 
of passing your test. Once you get through that and you're comfortable to take your exam, you're gonna have to schedule your exam ahead of time. Now keep in mind, when you schedule your exam, you're going to wanna to call ahead of time. You just can't show up and say, I'm ready to take the test. You have to be in their books and you have to be on their calendar and they're gonna give you a specific time and date to show up to the testing site. Another thing to keep in mind that this is not a open book test. So you're gonna to have to study really hard because you're not going to be able to bring any study material or any notes or any cheat sheets into the exam on test day. And this test is taken on a computer and it's mostly multiple choice questions. Now you might be asking, what do you actually need to bring to the testing center on test day? Well, there's a couple of things you need to bring. You basically need two forms of identification. Here are some things that count as forms of identification. A driver's license, a US social security card, a passport, a debit card with a signature, a credit card with a signature, or a green card. So you might be wondering, how long do you actually have to complete the Colorado real estate exam? Well, the good news is, is you have about 230 minutes to complete this exam. So you have plenty of time to get this done. Many people rush through this exam and they answer questions wrong that they would have answered right if they just took their time to digest the wording in that question. So make sure that you don't do that because although you can retake the exam, failing the exam is not a lot of fun, especially if you knew the right answers and you just rushed through the exam because you thought you were on a time crunch when you're really not on a huge time crunch. You have plenty of time to complete the exam. So pass or fail, how long does it actually take to get the results? Well, the good news is you might have a lot of anxiety and you probably just spent a lot of time and a lot of effort getting to this point. But the good news is once you walk out of the testing center, you are gonna know if you passed or failed. They're gonna tell you exactly you know, what you scored and then they're gonna tell you if it's a passing score or a failing score. And if you did fail the exam, you can come back and retake it. Just keep in mind, you're gonna have to repay to take that portion of the exam. And that can kind of add up if you fail it a couple times. Next, it's time to apply for your background check and fingerprinting. So in Colorado, you're going to have to get a background check to make sure that you don't have anything on your record that would deny you from getting your real estate license. They basically wanna make sure you don't have any criminal record and they check that for every single applicant that comes through to get their real estate license. Now, if there is something on your record, you might want to talk to the real estate commission and see if they're willing to grant you an exception. And that is a whole nother process, but it's something to look into if you really want to become an agent, but you do have something in your past that might prevent you from doing so. Now you might be wondering, how long does this all take? How long does it take to become a Colorado real estate agent? Well, the good news is, is that you can do a lot of this at your own pace, especially the pre-licensed classes because you can find them online. So I would say anywhere between three and six months is a normal time frame for someone to go through this process and get their license. If you have other obligations and you work in a full-time job or you have a really busy schedule and it's going to be really hard to cram this all in, it might take longer. But as long as you're putting the work in every day, you're going to get 1% closer to your end goal of completing your classes and getting your license. So either way, as long as you're working towards this every single week, you're going to get closer and closer to your end goal of getting your real estate license and becoming an agent. Now, here's the fun question. You might be wondering how much does it actually cost to get your real estate license in Colorado? So here's a quick breakdown. Keep in mind that these costs are subject to change at any time. These are just some numbers that we were able to find, but here's a quick checklist for you. We estimate about $39.50 for a fingerprint fee, $44.95 to take the Colorado real estate exam, $200 for your broker license application, three to $400 for pre-license courses. Again, feel free to check those out in the affiliate link below. Real Estate Express, they do a really good job and $230 for E&L insurance. So in total, we estimate you can get this done for under $1,000. Again, keep in mind that these costs can change at any time. They're just averages that we were able to find. Last but not least, I wanna talk about the importance of finding a quality real estate broker to partner with. So you did all this work, you put in all this effort, you spent months studying, you finally passed the exam, and now it's time to get your career started and get your career off the ground. This is often the hardest part. Many experienced agents joke and say that 
the real real estate test is after you pass the exam and you get your license. And the reason they say that is because 87% of all real estate agents that get licensed fail out of the business. Now, that's a really bad number. And we don't want to become a part of that statistic because many people do. And one of the best ways to avoid that is to get involved with a great broker that's going to be a really good mentor or at least has really good experienced agents that are going to be able to mentor you through your new process and get your business off the ground. Now, here are some questions you're going to want to ask when applying and interviewing with brokerages. The first thing is training. Training is so important. You're going to want to ask some major questions. The first question is, what kind of training and mentorship program does this broker have in place? Do they just have a general, you know, person that you can call when a problem comes up? Or do they have a structured outline and a step-by-step -step program on how to actually get your business off the ground? This is a really important question because if you don't ask these things, you might not actually get your expectations met and you might feel lost. And a lot of agents get lost, they struggle, and then before they know it, they run out of money and then they're they're basically out of the business and they're back at a nine to five job and they have a really bitter taste in their mouth from this business. Next is the splits. So real estate splits are not the most important thing, especially as a new agent, but you're a business person and it's something you wanna ask. You wanna see if the value that they're, they're giving you is worth the split that you're agreeing to. Now, if they have really good value, if they have really good mentorship, a high commission split might be okay, especially if they're giving you leads and systems and processes, it's well worth it. But if you're on a high split and they're doing nothing to help you get your business off the ground, that's probably not a good deal. Ongoing monthly fees. So just like a gym membership, a lot of brokerages have a monthly fee to be a part of that brokerage. This helps them cover some of their expenses and some of the overhead that they carry as a broker, such as office space and things like that. So don't let this deter you from getting into a really good brokerage that's going to help you you know really accelerate and grow your business fast but keep in mind that this is something that can dip into your savings and give you less time to actually go sell homes if you only saved a certain amount of money to get this business off the ground so in conclusion this is a really great career and if you're looking to sell homes and become the top real estate agent in your market this is a really good career to get into and the housing market is on fire. It's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna to to take a lot of effort, but if you put the work in and you just work a little bit towards this goal every single week, before you know it, you'll be there, you'll have your license and you'll have your new career off the ground. So I wish you the best of luck in your new real estate journey. If you have any questions about getting your license in Colorado, drop it in the comment section below. And if you like real estate content for real estate entrepreneurs, subscribe. We come out with new content every single week. Thanks so much for watching and have an awesome night.